feel the overwhelming to me because I'm an auto mechanic, not a public speaker. So this is really different for me to be here and not there. So I want to start first of all by saying that I'm here to connect with you guys. I'm not here to talk at you. I'd like to communicate with you some of the things that, you know, I've learned being almost 55, being in business and doing what we do. So, but i got to stop for a minute and just tell you guys, we have a daughter in high school. What is expected of you guys today is far greater, far more challenging and difficult than when I was in school. So kudos to you guys. You guys rock. I just got to tell you that right up front. I'm just taken back by that. So it's an honor to be here and I'm thankful. My education basically is ongoing, okay? I go to school every day, okay? When I started, I graduated high school in 1976 from Campbell High. It's closed now. There's a reason for that. But basically, I also too attended San Jose Regional Vocational Center. It's still ongoing. It's a great place. What they do is they teach you all the different trades. If you want to be an auto mechanic, body work, plumbing, electrical, they have all these different trades that they teach. And it's a, it is. It's a great place. So I also, too, I was a human mechanic for a while. I worked at a company called Pulse Once and Ford for a while. And I went through the apprenticeship program, learning and growing, and that was at San Jose City. And then you follow that up by, and I'm still doing it today, you go to night classes, okay? Say like Ford Warner puts on a class for EGR valves and emissions. Um, Ford puts on a diesel um, class, so you do this. You do all of those different classes because the automotive industry, as you know, is ongoing. So, and you never stop learning in this industry. It's endless, the things that you can learn. So, um, if I had one thing to do different when I was in school, it would be to do it better. Okay? What I wish I would have done was learn more, grow more, and just become a better student. Okay? I'm dyslexic, so reading, writing, and doing those basic things are challenging to me. So. Truthfully, school was so not my gig, okay? All I wanted to do is I wanted to blow out of high school, be done with it, and get to work, okay? So I sold myself short in a lot of, in a lot of areas of education. So I challenge you guys each and every day to do your best, okay? Learn, grow, move, do things. Always, always keep an open mind, okay? You never close your thoughts to, to new things or different things, okay? <clears throat> Sorry, I got sick a few months ago. I lost my voice and it never came back. So uh, uh, my voice is, is cracking. Um, I've got to use notes too because my memory is not there. So, from my work history, I started at a Chevron station a block down the street from where I ended up buying a lot of repair. So I started there in 1975, a long time ago. But it's been good, it really has. And then what we did is I grew that with my wife and, and some people. We grew that into two other Shaman stations, and then we grew it into our auto repair business. So at one time, we had three Shaman stations and an auto repair all running at the same time. So small business, small business is really important to this country. Small business is the number one employer in this nation. There's small little garages, auto repairs, small business, grocery stores. We're the number one employer in the country. So we need to support that. So I'm thankful that we do what we do. So the best decision that I ever made though was when I closed the Chevron stations and opened the garage. It became, life became so much more focused, so much more simple. <coughs> it's really done a great job providing for my family. You know, we have seven mechanics total. And my wife does a lot of the books on the for us. So what you have to do and what you have to learn and do as a small business people is, is also to never ending as much as the auto repair. So, 
Here's kind of where I'm at because school was never my thing. I wanted to get out and in the workforce and just do something that I enjoyed. So and auto repair was kind of my thing. So I liked it. I liked fixing my own motorcycles. I rode cycles a lot, cars, bridge cars. Just did all those kind of cool things that you do when you're in high school. So um, my typical work day, there's never two days that are the same, which is what I really like about being self-employed small business. What, what I'm going to start with in the morning, maybe what I finish before I go home in the evening, because of the fact that you never know, you never know what each day holds. So what happens is, is you've got to write service, you've got to answer phones. You know, when you have a staff of seven people, you've got to be guiding, directing, you've got to know kind of where everybody's doing, what everybody's doing. So you've got to really pay attention to what's happening on each and every job that's staffing for the day. So, you know, you've got to be able to order parts. Parts, the way we order parts now, the industry has changed so much that we now order the parts online. Back when we started, we used to make a phone call. Hey, I need spark plugs, gap, and go to forward. If you don't do it, that may be on. We go to a keyboard, and it's connected to a warehouse. And then what they do is they drop that, and they bring it to you. So that's pretty cool. But most of all, it really got to be flexible. You have to be flexible being small business and doing what you do. So here's a situation, too. It's about passion. Enjoy what you do. Okay? You're going to do it a long time, so find something that you like to do and enjoy it. Okay? That's what auto repair has done for me and my family. The industry itself, as you know, being an auto teacher, you can't keep up with it. It's forever changing very rapidly, very fast. You guys who are in the auto tech program, you're seeing just small snippets of what's actually happening, okay? And it's actually, it's amazing. The introduction of electronics okay, has so changed the automobile industry. I don't know if you guys know it, but there's more, there's more computers on cars today than the first lunar landing in the moon. So it's amazing to think that we're driving around and stuff that you could have landed on the moon. So it's, it is, it's, it's mind-boggling to me. The introduction of the, of the, uh, just all the electronics. Ride control is now electronically controlled. The analog brake systems are controlled now by computers, which is kind of, it's unique when the analog brake systems first came out on cars. People were actually hitting what they want to avoid. Because when you put your foot on the brake, it goes into analog. What would happen is the pedal would make noise and it would vibrate under your feet. So people would let off the brake. Boom! They hit what they wanted to avoid. So the computers are smarter, better, and faster than our reaction times. So what we have to do too is we have to learn to trust those computers and those electronics. Which is really, for an old school guy, really hard. Okay, you're not going to tell me how to drive my car. But what it is is they actually they do very well. Cars now today, they're the steering. A lot of the steering now is electronic. There's no link between the steering wheel and the back of the engine and the control arms. Those are all done now by electronic servos. So it's pretty amazing. So. Let's see. I'm oh, sure. Thank you. My voice is just gone. <laughs> Are there any questions so far? Do you have a minute?
So what I'd like to touch on too is the trades versus a you know like a four-year college because like you said for me college you know college wasn't in my plans because I just I was I was challenged with being dyslexic. The, just the basics were very difficult to, to work my way through. So I kind of knew that college was a good thing. So I really enjoyed just going out and being in the workforce. Okay. In the trades. Thank you. Yes. Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> now I can yell at you. <laughs> yeah. But basically, I knew that the school wasn't my game. College wasn't going to be for me. I had to do night classes, smaller classes, and, and do things like that. So the trades are actually a great way to make a living because they do. They supply you with a great life. The pay is good. And there's a lot of benefits for the trades. You get to work with your hands. And like we do in the automotive industry, we work with our mind as well as our hands. So we have the best of both worlds to do that. You get stimulated mentally as well as physically. And it's great when you can take something that's broken and fix it and put that back out on the road. The, the biggest thing that I really enjoy too is the fact that I get to work with a lot of different people. We have seven technicians, like I say, in my life, but it's all the different customers. You know, I've never had so many bosses in my life. Is because each customer that comes through that we service their vehicles and take care of them. They're our boss until I get their car done, fixed, and repaired. So it's kind of cool to look at it that way. And being in the industry as long as I have, I now I fix grandma's car, the son's car, and now I'm fixing grandchildren's cars. So I've had the opportunity to watch all of these families grow up and service all of their different vehicles. You know, and then learn about them personally. Go to their weddings, you know, and it's great, I love it, because what you've got to be, people skills, and people are where it's at. This world goes around because of people. You know, you're the next generation. You know, I have to tell you that I look into your eyes and I look out here, and I'm thankful for you guys, because of the fact that you're going to be taking care of me. So, I'm thankful for your education, I'm thankful for your hard work, you know. Um, basically, what I have are a few of my thoughts as well. Okay. Like, does anybody know why you're here? Why are you in school? <laughs> to do what? To learn. To learn. To learn, That's right? right? That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not here to fill your head with stuff and, and fill your calendar with things and to, to teach you things that you never can use again. So, you basically, why you're here is to learn how to learn, okay? And if there's one thing that I could have changed when I was in school at your age, is that I could have learned how to learn better, okay? To expand my mind, to learn to overcome things, to do better at, at certain things, you know, so you're here to learn how to learn, which is so important because, like I say, every day of your life, you're gonna learn something. And that's my strive is each day I go into that business, each day I go into life. What am I going to learn today? What things are going to open up for me? What changes am I going to make in my life that are going to be better? And that's basically you live your life that way. Okay? So learn how to learn if I can encourage that. Um, if you're going to go to college, college today is very challenging. The reason it's challenging is you not only have, when I was in school, you had a very small geographical area going to college. Now these colleges are nationwide, if not international. So you're competing for a spot in international areas to go to school to learn what you're going to do. So the job market is so much more competitive today simply because of the fact that it's international. The world has become so much smaller. So, um, bless you. Okay. I live a philosophy as well. My dad taught me this. Never go to work a day in your life. Okay. And what that means is 
find something that you like to do, enjoy it, have a passion for it. When you have a passion for doing something, you'll do it very well. Does anybody know the difference between good and excellent? That's about that much. Okay, that's all it is. So, you know. Does anybody know the difference between a job and a career? I'll show you. This is a job. Okay. This is a career. It's a big difference because it's how you perceive. It's how you perceive yourself. So you never strive for a job, strive for a career. One thing I can tell you too is never strive for perfection because nobody's perfect. Strive for excellence. Do your very best each and every day. Um, there's kind of another thing that my dad told me. He says, um, do what you like to do and then figure out how to get paid for it. Okay? So whatever your passion is, follow it, chase it, work hard. Okay? Because now the opportunities, okay, you young people now have to create your own opportunities. You guys have to work hard. You've got to get, you've got to dig deep to figure out what's going to, what you're going to do, what you want to do. Because things are just so much more challenging today. That's why I say I really appreciate you guys. We have a daughter in school. I mean, it's, it's amazing. The things that she does today, we never did. We never thought of it. So, well done to you guys. And then also, too, choose your rep wisely. The reason I say choose your rep wisely, you're going to be in it a long time. Okay? I've been fixing cars almost 40 years. So, I'm happy to be in that rut. And it's worked very well for me and my family. So, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you guys and to be with you. It was truly an honor. Okay? Is there any questions? Yes? How did you go about studying your business? Like, what obstacles did you have to overcome to create You know, the desire to do it overcomes all things. And what you have to do is uh, another light thing that I say, when you don't know what to do, do what's in front of you, and, and it'll connect the dots. But basically, what you have to do when you want to start a business, get a concept, and then go to businesses that are like what you want to think about doing, and just go one point, see how it works, and then find out how to do it. You know, and then you can do it. So. Any other questions? What's the biggest challenge you have now compared to when you first started your company, to, you know, as far as starting a company or keep your company going? Um, that's a great question, you know, because, well, I'll be honest with you, I really never think of it because I, with the passion, you know, with the passion that I have to do it, I just go do it. But finance is probably one of the biggest, is one of the biggest challenges that we have today, is finding a balance of, of doing work building it correctly, doing it correctly so that, that the numbers all work. So the technology today, in some cases, makes it very much easy to work on cars. In some, it makes it even more challenging because a lot of the things now that we have to do, the dealerships are the only ones that have the information to do it. So, you know, like it's kind of interesting. We buy a, you know, like the key fobs, you guys open the cars, and the doors open. Okay, well, a lot of those, you have to go to the dealer to buy the program then to be able to do that. So when that battery goes dead in that fob, sometimes you can't just change the battery. You have to change the battery and then take it down to the dealer and have it flash. So a lot of, some of the frustration is the inability to do some of those simple things. Because back when I started, you did it all. I mean, when a starter failed, you rebuilt it. You know, now you can't rebuild it, you just you throw it away and still roll it. So that's a big challenge. You know, is, is the mindset of sometimes it's disposable, and sometimes you're locked out of some of these cars. So, does that work? Okay. Because there is, there's, there's a lot of challenges. Each and every day, there's challenges to stay in business, to learn cars, and to grow. 
you know, it's, as long as you have the mindset that you want to do it, you can do it. So, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. This is really really a careers, but what's your favorite type of car? <laughs> favorite type of car? I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. My favorite type of car is when it's done. It checks in the drawer, and I see the tail lights. <laughs> but no, you know. But seriously, my favorite kind of car really they're the ones like the Hondas and Toyotas are very reliable, and they're and they're very uh, worker friendly. So a lot of the things they're laid out very well. They service well, and they they maintain well. And they're a forgiving car. So, yeah. What's the number one thing that you've done? You've been around for 25 years. What's the number one thing that I've done? What, what, what do you think that you've done well that kept you around for 25 years? Communication. Communication is paramount. No matter what happens, you need to be able to talk to those customers. You know. I've had friends in the industry that have gone out of the business. They've gone broke simply because of one reason. They spend an hour working on the wrong end of the car. The reason they're working on the wrong end of the car is that they don't know how to obtain the proper information from their customers. You're looking at a brake sweep. Well, that's your customers at the front or the back. You need to know what car, what end of the car you're going to work on. Communication. When you're talking money with people, number one, be accurate. Number two, be truthful. And number three, communicate. You know, the biggest thing for staying in business and staying alive today is communication. You know, people, people are where it's at. People are the lifeblood. People are success. And people are really, they're great. You know what I mean? Well, I can't say enough about just being with people. You know, you got to love people and enjoy them. And as much challenge as they are, you've got to enjoy them as well. But communication is the number one thing. Okay? And I'm not going to bash texting, okay? And I'm not going to bash emails, okay? But when I have something important to say to you, I want to look in your eyes. I want to hear your voice. Because that tells me whether I'm connected with you or not. So it's important. Communication is everything. Okay.